on to uh, video number two, where I'm just going to be um, talking you through uh, some of my um, past memories, just for pure interest, really. And um, I uh, let me know if you want to hear more videos of, of, of me talking about memories, because this is obviously, you know, um, this might bore you to death, or you might really enjoy this. So do let me know your thoughts on this. And also, of course, if you've got any questions you'd like to ask me, do carry on posting them, because I will try and get through them when I can. Um, so this is just random memories, really, um, about my time at primary school. Um, now, I'm the type of person that I do often kind of think a lot about the past. Um, I, I, I very am drawn to memories. I like going over them in my head, past experiences, you know, just running them through in my head. You know, experience, it's like you can experience it again, you know, by going through the, the good memories, you know. Um, and um, I do that a lot. Um... I don't know why I do it, I, I guess it's just because I kind of like to feel a certain connection with things of what happened in the past and it tried to make sense of it maybe. I often think about my time at primary school um, in year six. Now year six was actually my best year of primary school. Um, it took me ages to get used to primary school um, in, in a sense that before year six it was just somewhere I went, you know. I went to school, I didn't, you know, I didn't put up a fuss or anything, it was just, you know, it, 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 what you did. You know, I just went along with it, it's just what you did, but I didn't really like, I was just, I guess, yeah, I mean, it was okay going to school, but, primary school that is, secondary school was another ball game, but, um, it wasn't something that, you know, I really, really, really loved either, um, it was year six was the best year of primary school for me, and I'd happily go back and do year six again, that was the best year of my life, age 10 to 11, so full of optimism, so full of hope for the future, um, you know, yes, that was the best year for me. I had a lovely teacher called Mrs Baker, and I think this was, um, that obviously helped, the fact that I had such a nice teacher, because previous year's teachers were sometimes a little bit strict. Mrs Baker was a softie, she never shouted, she was really nice. Um, I mean, I did mess around a fair bit in this year, because I knew Mrs Baker would never shout, so I knew I could get away with it. So sorry, Mrs Baker, yeah, you know, she had to put up with my tomfoolery, though, you know, I'm sure I caused her a fair amount of grief. But um, she was really nice, and she never, like, really severely castigated me or anything. Um, one of the things I do, I was a little bit of a naughty kid, so sometimes what I do was I sit at my work table, and um, I blow my cheeks out and tap them like this. Yeah, I remember doing that. Um, it, I don't know why I did it. I think I often I just did it because I was bored and because it was... It, it literally did make the other kids laugh. Like, there was a boy who sat across from me and he always found it really funny when I did that. Um, so I got a reaction. Um, <laughs> I remember doing that in year six. Um, and also, I was a bit mischievous, mis mischievous um, during um, story time because I'd mess around on the carpet blowing raspberries. So I ended up getting... And finding it hilariously funny, of course. But um, I ended up getting sent out of the room a fair number of times. Um, but as I say, Mrs Baker never shouted at me. She was a really nice teacher. But I did obviously maybe take advantage of that a little bit and was a bit more naughty than I probably would have been with a teacher who was more strict. Because in the previous year, in year five, the teacher, another Mrs Baker, was a lot stricter. So although like I sometimes didn't do the work and stuff, a lot of the time, in fact, I was just daydreaming. But I did it in a more like passive way where I'd just be like staring out of the window. But I wouldn't be like actively messing around because I knew I'd get shouted at. Um... So yeah, so I did miss baby a few times, I'm afraid to say. Now, uh, one of the reasons why I think year six was actually my favourite year um, was because we learnt about the human body in this year and I became so interested that I sat riveted to every word Mrs Baker said and wrote everything down in my notebook. I remember this really clearly. She would t tell us all about the human body. I love school, because we were learning about the human body. This was the most amazing subject. Um, obviously, now I know, yeah, obviously, that was a, a special interest, you know, like autistic people, obviously, we do get very obsessed with things. And um, obviously, I didn't have that vocabulary to describe it back then, but it clearly was a special interest, because I was really quite intensely obsessed with the human body, in a good way in a good way, um, but you know, I want lots of books about it, I knew all the facts, I had this book all about, you know, all the processes of the human body, um, you know, I even got a, um, a skeleton kit that my mum helped me with, you know, to make an actual um, a skeleton that hung in, you know, hung in the, um, in the wardrobe, um, so yeah, I loved it, anatomy, everything, 
Um, so I was really, I, took, I wrote down everything she said, everything, you know, all the, um, you know, the bodily crises such as puberty, periods, you know, what happens when we're sick, everything fascinated me about the human body at this age. Um, <laughs> Um, so yeah, it was one of the rare times I was engaged at school, concentrating instead of my usual daydreaming. Um, this just shows, you know, how our special interests are such great motivators. We also studied the ancient Greeks in this year as well, which was another interest. Not as intense as the human body, but I did find the ancient Greeks very fascinating, particularly when we learned about the foods they ate and stuff like that. So yeah, all round, this was a great year. Oh yeah, we did a solar system as well, that also fascinated me. Lots of things, not to the same extent, but it still fascinated me. Lots of stuff in this year we did that I found very enjoyable. Um, yeah, I received a book about puberty, age 10, but my mistake was to bring it into school and read bits of it out to year one children in the playground. Um, in the school, um, it was like a, a, a playhouse. Um, I thought it'd be really funny um, just to like educate them about puberty and, and not realising... Well, I don't know if I didn't realise it was inappropriate or whether I just didn't care because I just found it amusing anyway. But anyway, I got told off of that and... Um, Basically, my, my book was temporarily confiscated, so I did get a bit of trouble because of its interest. But, you know, it's quite funny at the same time when I think back on it. <laughs> at playtime, another th a great thing about Year 6, and why I thought it was the best year, was that at playtime I finally worked out how to skip in a team playground game when I was about 10 years old. So, you know, often um, kids, like girls, they would play skipping games. You know, two girls holding a rope. You know, and then, like, the kids would stand in line and run in, wouldn't they? And they go, in goes the doctor, in goes the nurse. You know, go do that jumping skipping game. You know, that kids do. And um, I really wanted to learn how to do it, um, but for ages I couldn't run into the rope, so I had to stand there while someone, you know, in the middle of the rope, was, well, um, and then the rope would be, you know, um, what's the word? You know what I mean. <laughs> I, can't, I can't think, I can't explain it. But um, for ages I didn't know how to run into the rope, I had to stand there and let them, um, you know, move the rope over me. But finally, um, around sort of year six age, when I was ten, ten years old, I finally worked out how to run into the rope instead of standing over in the middle without running in. And um, I was, and this really then opened up so much enjoyment for me during during um, during break times. It was really fun. Um, it did not matter then that I had few to no friends because this game had strict rules and all were included. That's the great thing about primary school games, unlike a secondary school, it's not so much small talk involved. So even if you're a bit <clears throat> socially awkward, if you can learn how to run into a skipping rope. The other kids will include you in that game, regardless of whether or not you actually get a friend or anything. They're just glad that they've got other kids to run into the, ga run into the rope, you know? Great time. Um, yeah, so it made break times enjoyable for once. When I had no other activity to engage in a break, such as playing with the hula hoops or skipping, I would run around the playing field with my arms outstretched, zooming right past the other kids, like basically being an aeroplane. And I did annoy them. Um, obviously, I don't think they're too pleased to be running right past their games, you know, fast as an aeroplane, you know, being an aeroplane. I mean, I loved it. I loved the feeling of air against my arms. I was, a, I was a very energetic child, so I could run really fast. But obviously, it kind of annoyed some of the other kids. Um, however, I did finally make a friend in year five. Um, and in year six, this friendship seemed to blossom for a while. This is the other reason why year six was my favourite year, so I did finally actually have a friend. Um, it took me all of primary school. I think it was around sort of year five time when I first became friends with her, but the friendship became more substantial when I was in year six. Um, and this friend was in my year group, because most of the kids I played with in my primary school years were younger kids, or older kids, mainly younger kids, just because I couldn't really relate that much to my peer group. And that's what the school noticed as well, was flagged up on my report in my interaction difficulties, is that I usually played with younger kids. But this was <coughs> a rare occasion when I actually made a friend in my peer group in my year. Um, we did often fall out, it has to be said, um, because I could only play with her on my own. I was very possessive. Um, you know, I couldn't share her with any other girls. I couldn't do group playing, you know, apart from um, skipping rope game. That was different because there's clear rules in it. But, you know, if you're just expected to, like, gather, a group of girls gathering and just talking, that just didn't make sense. So I got really possessive of her. Like, she had to be my friend, my friend alone. I mean, I loved it when she was coming round to my house after school for tea. My mum knew her mum and her younger brother's in my brother's year, so I think that helped as well. But my mum had already got to know her mum and obviously encouraged the friendship. So she did come round, for, round to my house for tea a few times. We always had, we always used to have quiche and potato croquettes and she came round, I loved it. 
My mum always got really nice quiche whenever she came round, which was a bonus because they didn't have much of our food. Um, uh, when she came out to my house after school, it meant that um, I had to have all to myself at school. But when she was going out to her other friend's house for tea, she would not play with me. It almost was like there's this agreement between us. And when she came out to my house, she, I always have her all to myself all day as part of a kind of like deal because she was coming around to my house after school. So obviously we played with each other all day. So I got owned her for the day. When she was going around to her other friend's house, again, she wouldn't play with me. And I was on my own because I didn't have any other friends. Um, I loved playing teachers with this girl, you know, contrary to some stereotypes. Yes, I did enjoy some pretend play when I was a kid, but only on my terms, it has to be said, and only in very particular situations, like, um, you know, obviously when I was at home with this girl, um, you know, it was, it, it was in my space and I could, to an extent, kind of control the procedures in a way. Um, but yes, I loved playing teachers. That was a great game. You know, I loved being your authoritarian teacher with a naughty child, you know, hilarious. Often I would try and play like like really strict teaching, you know, kind of like shouting and stuff, and it was hilarious. Or I'd play a really naughty child, kind of like a bit like how I was at school. And then um, she would tell me off, and it was really funny. So that was a great game. I, I enjoyed. I remember that with affection. Very amusing that game was. The school disco. Yes, I remember the school disco. I didn't enjoy the school disco. You went to the school disco because that's what you did. Um, but no, I didn't like it, you know, obviously bright lights, loud music, obviously I now know why I didn't like it, because obviously, you know, those sort of sensory areas, like, I don't like loud music, I don't like bright lights, that's obviously why I didn't like it, obviously at that age I didn't have that vocabulary to know why I didn't like it, I just didn't like it, and obviously I wanted to escape from it, so, <clears throat> luckily for me, though, this girl was happy to go with me and hide in the toilet, so that's kind of usually what we did at school disco, we go and get our fizzy drink, and then we go and just hiding in the toilets and have some fun up there. That was great. So it was really good that I had that friend in year six. And that's why it was such a good year for me. Even though we broke up a lot. And there were many times I didn't have anyone to play with. You know, the fact that I did have this on-off friendship with this girl made it a good year. We both like the Spice Girls as well. After all, it was the 90s. I even got slightly into clothes and fashion at this age, believe it or not. I think I first started wearing makeup. Which is funny because I don't wear makeup at all anymore. Um, I've given up on that one. But, but at that age, I find it fascinating. Um, you know, I got a crop top, I got the tight shorts for my ninth birthday, I got grey sparkly jelly sandals for my 10th, again, the 90s, 90s fashion. Um, I quite like 90s fashion, I do miss, I like those jelly. I don't know if any of you grew up in the 90s, if you remember any of these things I'm talking about, it was all crop tops, wasn't it? Tight shorts, jelly shoes, Spice Girls. In year, um, where was I? Oh yes, and then there was also for year 6 camp, and a girl I mentioned was automatically my sleeping partner. I remember, I do remember getting annoyed though at school camp when uh, she played with our friend, as I've already mentioned I was very possessive, she had to be my friend, and um, I had brought a toy cuddly goat with me and I kept running round them with the goat, making the goat talk and <clears throat> trying to get them to play with me. I had no idea how to get them to like play with me so I kept like running around them, like kind of being really silly and inappropriate but I didn't know how to like share friends so that was my way of trying to get the girl back but obviously it didn't work, it just made me look weird. But I do remember that. Camp food, it has to be said, was great. Um, we could pack our own lunch boxes and I took crisps and I ate all the food I usually had limited access to and my mum would never normally allow me to have that often so that was a good thing about camp but food, yes. See, even these events that I might not otherwise really like, but because of the food. I mean, I liked camp, don't get me wrong. That was enjoyable too. Um, at this age as well, I didn't have quite so many phobias or OCD, so I think that's also why I look back on it with affection. I was a lot more carefree than I am now. But yeah, the food obviously made it really great for me, because obviously my food, my lifelong food obsession. So obviously I would eat and eat and eat and eat. You just would be like, where do you put it all? I'm like, I've gone back for seconds, for more, more. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, we all had to write a camp diary, and um, I actually still have mine, so if you like, I can actually read it to you in my next video, let me know if that's something you would like. So, as I say, these are just a few memories from year six, which was my favourite year of school. So, would you like to hear more memories next time, positive or negative? I thought I'd tell you some positive memories for, for change, because often with, you know, memories, particularly, you know, when you're autistic, quite a few of them are quite negative. You know, rejection, things like that, phobias, anxieties. But, you know, also, it's important, of course, to remember that just because we're autistic doesn't mean that we don't have positive things going on as well. And a lot of the stuff when I was a child I can look back on with affection as actually really positive stuff. Um, you know, 
that isn't directly related to autism. Some of it is, like obviously my special interest, but a lot of it is just me being a child, you know, just enjoying life. And I think sometimes it's important to look back on some of the positive things that occurred in our life because as in autism we do often maybe sometimes just focus on negative stuff. Okay, so I'm going to finish now and um, I haven't decided what I'm going to talk about next week so do let me know if you've got any ideas and um, post them please in the comments box below and I look forward to speaking to you again next week.